Hi, Tom. I've made a little progress in looking at our fluid teardrop optics in front of a cornea to see if that is a useful idea or not. Um, ever since you first mentioned it at the Anogi Hanagi's sushi place a couple years ago, I was hoping I could use some sort of mathematics to see if that thin liquid film makes a difference in adjusting an eye's focus um, through optics calculations. And <clears throat> never could figure out how to do that. Clearly, I was always left with the suspicion that my calculations were wrong. So recently, I found this tool, Optical Ray Tracer, at this website. This tool is a simulator of optical lenses, it's free, and it works on PCs and Macs. Here's a simple example, uh, well, not so simple example, but a nice clean example of what it looks like when you create lenses and have light rays pass through them. You can download, if you want, this package for um, portable Java executable. And that's what I did. I downloaded that uh, jar file, which is a um, Java platform, independent platform. So this same jar would work on your Mac as it does on my PC. And to launch it, of course, you need to have Java on your uh, Mac. Um, which is also a free download if it, you don't have it. But if you do, uh, then all you do is double click on the program and it launches. And uh, I'm gonna clear, clear this. So when you first start up, you get this basic lens and uh, you can also store your um, favorite creation. So I've created an eyeball and I'm going to open it here, open i.txt. And this was saved from the last time I did the work. You don't enter any of this stuff. It's just a copy and paste. So I'm going to select all of this. This is a definition of each of the lenses in the system that I created to simulate the eye. Different uh, lenses include the, the main lens, uh, include uh, the retina as a placeholder, includes uh, includes a cornea, and a pre-corneal tear film. So that's the key piece um, to the puzzle. And we have IOR, which is index of refraction. So we can change that and see what the effect is. So let's do that. I'm going to make a copy and I'll put this away and here I'm going to load this paste the okay to paste from what I've copied yeah so here's my eyeball and I created a lens within a lens to simulate the uh, uh, vitreous body of the eye and I just have this short what do you call it um, planar piece here that does not allow light to pass. If I were to get rid of that, then if I make it not active, then light passes beyond our eyeball. And then we have our main lenses. So here we have uh, the main lens. And I've drawn everything to be kind of to what I think is a standard shape using these left and right sphere radiuses. And then the um, five millimeters in in height uh, or diameter or that's radius so 10 millimeters in diameter um, then I've created a, uh, a cornea which again is somewhat shaped like it should be and then I have put my thin film simulation here so I think the key is what would happen if we change the index of refraction from 1.3, which might be the normal uh, watery kind of teardrop, 
and let's add a whole bunch of sugar um, to the liquid to make it as much of a uh, as high an index of refraction as you can get maybe 1.8 and let's see what we're going to do is see if this focus changes so we'll press enter on that and you can see yes the uh, focus does change and we can see by just how much um, in terms of the physical effect or a graphical effect and the whole simulation is uh, is movable and playable so I can take um, we might want to make this look more like a contact lens by sticking it out here a ways and uh, the difference between a contact lens and um, a teardrop not a whole lot so we can go back to where it was and um, play with that just to see how that difference is affected um, yeah so we can uh, do a bunch of little play time just to see what happens uh, it's notable that just like in real life the effect of the cornea has the most effect on the ability to focus so if I make that lens inactive you can see that light passes way past what would be a normal focus area on the retina so if I put that one back and I take the main lens and make that inactive sure the focus changes but the beam is still within this narrower um, part of the eye so the whole simulation is playable and um, have a little fun um, with what the whole thing can do uh, oh I just moved my uh, vitreous body uh, yeah so I can fix that just by doing some resets here until I'm just going to keep resetting until our eyeball is back in focus uh, there we go and now uh, we have um, the basic eyeball so that's about it uh, first step to me was to see if it was viable to use a liquid as a teardrop effector to change the focus and maybe it is um, this simulation doesn't do physical optics so I can't make like little rigid bodies on here for a ferron cell type of lens or I can't add macro mm, molecular structures in here or fibrils to try to simulate that uh, um, some sort of change in dipole uh, not just a bulk index of refraction so there's more work to be done but the initial experiment and a simple and free simulated optics bench that includes a vitreous body that would be really hard to make with a normal optics bench namely how do I put lenses under water uh, to simulate the eyes actual liquid um, and not just use plain air so the simulator is pretty good if you want to play with it you know how to do that now